You're watching All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. Hello and welcome to the All To Play For podcast brought to you by Joe and Coral with me, Lindsay Hipgrave, and you, Joe Cole. And Joe, it's the final episode of the Euros. It's yeah. flown by, hasn't it? It's flown by, Lindsay, and what a journey we've been. We, we, we couldn't have picked a better tournament to do this with. It's, it's been the most fun time of the week for me, getting in and coming in, having a chat, and we get to talk football. And uh, yeah, absolutely loved it. I feel a bit bad being a bit of a Debbie Downer from the start about England. I should have had no. more of your positivity. Uh, listen, I, think. I, I have. I'm, I don't often blow my own trumpet, but since I've got it, out, I've got it right. I, You've I've got seen, it all right. I've, been, to be I've fair. been. I've been banging the drum for this team for years and years, and right the way through this tournament. And and, and that was, what's beautiful, Linz, I see loads of people now, not just not just like apologising to Gareth and the team, or, or but just saying, look. look we, we held our hands up. And that's such a good thing to do as human beings because I'm wrong a lot of the time. Ask my wife. <laughs> but when you look, when it, people are so wrong about Gareth and this team and we're here and it's such a momentous time for our country. And yeah, let's all just get behind the team on the weekend. And I cannot wait. I know, literally yeah. counting down the hours. Yeah. And we've got a very special guest joining yeah. us on the show today. We're delighted to have one of the most cultured playmakers of his generation. He scored eight goals in 40 international appearances and represented Spain at the World Cup and the European Championships. He was twice named European Midfielder of the Year and was once managed by a certain Gareth Southgate. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the one and only Geiske Menzietta. Thank you. Great to see you, great Geiske. <laughs> one one see, game mate. left as well. It, it's been great so far, hasn't it? Is, it is, and it's similar like England. Spain also had really bad beginning from, from the fans, the yeah. country in terms of criticism, uh, players being picked, maybe yeah. not at the, at the level that people thought about it. And we only reached semi-final, unfortunately, but it, the country as well kind of apologizing to Luis Enrique, yeah. especially the media, because they thought, okay, this team is not going to get through yeah. the, the group stages. Do you know what, guys, are like, I see Spain as parallels, because Spain, before 2010, yeah. were like England, we, we were seen as the underachievers. Yeah. And then you had that, that era. Yeah. I mean, do you see parallels with England's young players now, or, or, or when you was sort of coming to the end of your international career, so you would have seen the Iniestas yeah. and all these boys. Do you see that? Do you see that in what we have with Mount Foden, Grealish and these young players? Yeah, certainly. And also because there's a, a, a pressure in terms of a barrier yes. mentally. We had quarterfinal, you had semi-final. So also because yeah. our local leagues are so strong, Premier League yeah, and La Liga. Yeah, yeah. So, so great uh, players, individual skills. Yeah. So when you see them together, kind of PlayStation style, everyone yeah. expecting like, okay, these guys are going to, I'm gonna, yeah, fly, yeah, I'm yeah, gonna yeah. play easily and win easily, but it's not because we see how competitive yeah. it is. So until you get that generation that breaks, like hopefully for England is now, uh, because the talent is coming and, and it's been working. Yeah, I mean people forget that there's a lot of work behind yeah. all these young talent investing in academies and, and yeah. VFA, etc. Um, so yeah, it, it, it takes a process. And and 2008 when we won the the first Euros, we said one of the manager almost have to resign before the Euros because really? yeah. And now you think about the Iniestas, Chavis, mm -hmm. uh, Fernan uh, Torres, all these guys, says Fabregas. You probably felt like you were watching Spain, that 54 pass move at the end of the England yeah. semi-final. <laughs> that, so that was the most beautiful moment for me because we're sitting there watching it and just the control. Yeah. And it's, it's great you saying what you said about the process because I go back 10, 15 years and yeah. we changed our academy. Yeah. Process. You've yeah. played in England mm. in the sort of early 2000s. So you, yeah. England was England back then, like the football was yeah. different. Now we slowly integrate yeah. within Europe. We've learned from the, the great Spanish sides, mm -hmm. all these great players coming over, like Guy, who's, who's coming. We see the talent, the technique, the yeah. tactical ability, and we've developed and developed and we've improved because we was on the path, the wrong path mm. for so many years. And we turned, steered the ship and it's just now getting to the point where we can see success. And it's, we, the parallels with Spain is, 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 I hope we go on to win multiple tournaments like they did. Yeah, go through in a row. So. Oh, <laughs> well, let's, let's not get... Let's get past the first yeah, hurdle, yeah, yeah. First, first of all. <laughs> what have been the highlights for you then so far from the tournament? Uh, I think overall, like, like the, the level of the national teams. I think football yeah. is, is, is increasingly getting better. Uh, there's no like small countries where they're all very well organised, well prepared, coaches mm. at highest level. But I guess it has to be the last 16 when we, when we saw France and, and Spain kind of comebacks uh, mm. with, with Croatia and France with, I think it was Austria, Austria no? right? Yeah. So I think those two games kind of summarize 
what the tournament is about. There's, there's, there's yeah. no favorites. There's no big difference be between teams. France seemed like from the beginning was going to be champion even mm -hmm. from the starting. And they're out. They were out in, yeah. in the last 16. Um, so probably th those two games, I think, were actually in the same day. So I think that Monday, day. Yeah, yeah, that, that Monday awesome was absolutely day. glorious, wasn't it? It was yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And, and a word about Spain as well. You must be gutted not to be playing England in the final, especially after the performance yeah. in the semi. I think they were the better team on the night. Yes, but again, um, I think we, I mean, Spain was happy reaching semi-finals. Once you get there, you know, you, yeah. you, you want to go farther and you want to get the final because you're ambitious. Uh, but in terms, if you analyze the, the how it started, the team, if a very young team, uh, so semi-finals is not too bad. Like, like a, a pro, in a process of, of building up the, towards the World Cup. Yeah. So I think people are quite happy with it. Uh, of course, disappointed that I couldn't reach the final. I wanted Spain England yeah. in the final, would have been amazing. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but Italy, I mean, penalties. I, I, sometimes it's not luck because there's a lot of preparation nowadays. But at least you 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 try. We, we play very well, uh, and Italy certainly was one of the best teams in the tournament as well. Yeah, it felt like the best team of the tournament went through, yeah. but the best team on the night lost yeah, Spain in that were the game. Best. Like, Luis Enrique got it right yeah. on yeah. the night. He, he, he played with a false nine, yeah. and and coming off of Chiellini and Bonucci, because yeah. they want to be up against someone, yeah. and they don't want to be in there and leaving space, in, yeah, especially exactly. without Spinazzola. Like when he yeah. got because Emerson is lovely, lovely player. But he's not played football, no. and it's difficult to play at the top level when you're mm. not have your your momentum. So, I think Luis Enrique was fantastic was, yeah. on the night. Tactically, they were the better side, but the Italians got the job done. Yeah. And the, the the goalkeeper Donnarumma, he he, he looks like for me just like a young Petr Cech. That some of the saves he was making mm. on the night, he was incredible. That's so the Italians fantastic. they got lucky. For me to get through. Who's been your player of the tournament? Player of the tournament? Uh, it has to be one out of Italy or England, I guess, because winners. I mean, I'm, again, I'm Spanish. I, I love Pedri. 18 year old, oh. a guy that he plays like he's 30 year old, that he's been playing all his life in this team. Uh, and he also he had a lot of pressure because Luis Enrique played him. Yeah. Uh, why is this guy playing? Uh, Thiago was on the bench. Yeah. Why is he not playing Thiago, more experienced player? Yeah. Um, so I think he's, he's, he's been an amazing football player. And also for Barca, the, he played the whole season amazing. Yeah. The se second minutes played to Messi for Barcelona yeah. for an 18-year-old kid. Yeah. That is incredible. How good can he be if he's like that now? If he continues that way, uh, could be the, the following the Iniesta, Xavi's yeah. um, sort of path. He's really good like in terms of uh, maturity with the ball, without the ball, he's always wanting the ball, yeah. always trying to break lines, uh, last pass. Yeah. I think as, as he will get older and be more comfortable on, on his own shoes, we could see him probably scoring goals and that would be, of course, yeah, topping up yeah. his, his already excellent football. Yeah. Who's been your player of the tournament so far? Oh, it's a great tournament. Uh, well, it's going to be an Englishman for me. I think you, you, you can choose between I think Raheem Sterling's mm, yeah. been because yeah. again he, there was a lot of question marks on him yeah. before the tournament he's been outstanding Harry Maguire you know he's not he didn't play the first two games but the, the last two games he's the been impact a rock in. Yeah. oh and so um, from the Italian perspective I think Donnarumma's been exceptional for them like I just look look at him and he, he, rem, he looks like a he's going to be a, a, a god of the game like a Buffon he's going to be 20 years oh. In, in the top level. Um, if you're going to say one player, one player, I'm going to probably go with Raheem. Because, just because of the... I think he epitomises the new, young English player that, you know, he's he's not as young as he was, but he's just... He, he, he's got that... He's a leader. Yeah. And we've not seen that from him. Yeah. He's a, He's been a, he's been exceptional. And... and I played with him at the back end of my career at Liverpool, so I know what he is as a character, and he's a very, very good lad, a very good character, and I'm just buzzing that the country right behind him now. Yeah. What's impressed you about him, guys? Because I think for a lot of us, he, yeah. he wouldn't have been in our starting eleven know, because Chris, of the season it, he's right? had. Mm. No, I think, like you said, I think he's very, very mature, and I've, and I've seen a lot of interviews that he's, yeah. he's done, and, and he kind of remarks that, like, he's very more subtle, comfortable, and you know, his own not only on the pitch, but also off the pitch, that everything that goes around him. And, 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 and being a leader, I think 
yeah. on and off the pitch in terms of getting the ball. When you are a player, you, you won't be surrounded by these guys that when they yeah. get the ball, want to make things happen. And he's one of those that is either in the box or outside. Uh, a lot of pressure, we want the ball all the time. No, no hiding, no, 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 no trying to, to avoid that responsibility. Yeah, do you know what? Um, I met, <laughs> a bit off piece here, but uh, Chunks, the YouTuber who played in Soccer Aid, yeah. he, lived, he lived with um, Raheem and they could see Wembley. They're from the same area and it's yeah. a real tough part of England. Lots of gangs and all that. And he was saying Riz Raheem was, was left, left alone as a youngster by the games because they knew that, that this is the kid that's going to make it. He was that know? good. But then. he had that pressure. He could see Wembley, you know, and he got a beautiful story. I think he put on his Instagram today talking about, you know, Harry's mum when she'd come over from Jamaica. Mm-hmm. She had to, you know, she was cleaning hotels, cleaning beds and to, just to, to keep him on the straight and narrow. And then he's, so he's a, he's a tough, tough boy and a leader. And he's just someone that the whole country should be proud of. Yeah. We are, we yeah. are. And, and the coral odds for the player of the tournament, uh, Raheem, is 13 to 8 favourite. Harry yeah. Kane is 4 to 1. And Federico Chiesa yeah. is 9 to 1 to win the award as mm-hmm. well. Let's talk about that final then on Sunday. Has it surprised you that England have got this far? No, it was for me one of the favourites. Yeah. Also, I think the fact that they will play most of the games at home although not many fans in the, in the early games. Mm. But I think it makes a difference. Uh, and you could see from the beginning, a lot of criticism as well. They're not playing well, what we said earlier, a lot mm. of quality, individual yeah. quality. So expectations were high. But when you see from inside, like the manager, uh, Gareth was thinking, of course, you have to be mm. tough at the back and then you go enough quality up front. This guy will, will, will create whatever. Uh, so you saw a really solid team. And I think that was, that was key for, for, it actually is, Mm. for England. Uh, so I kind of see them favourites, slightly. I think it's a very, very close final. But yeah, England for me was one of the favourites, certainly. Yeah. And what do you really like about this, this England squad? Yeah, that, the balance. And then, then, like, a lot of the players in their own clubs are like leaders. And when you bring all, all that together, sometimes that doesn't work. But I think managers look at that very closely mm. nowadays because you want to spend like a month together and on the pitch, some players not really playing, although in the teams are uh, main characters so like how everyone is like taking the role and, and, and trying to add up rather than, than bringing yeah. promise into oh I'm not playing oh I want to leave yeah, yeah, yeah. causing trouble so it feels from outside that everyone is, is wanting to from the beginning is, is trying to push in the right direction you captain the sides you play for what do you yeah. think of Harry Kane and his leadership qualities well amazing like again when you've been under so much pressure like he has been oh he's not scoring goals but yeah but again when you when you've been in a, in a dressing room, you know what represents a, a, a guy like him. And also on the pitch, he's not, he never hides. He always mm-hmm. is there, he's always working hard, trying to create space, trying to create something else for the teammates. Okay, he might not be scoring, but is he still producing something for the yeah. team or bringing something to the team? And I'm sure that's what uh, Southgate wanting from him. Okay, you know, you the leader, you have to be there all the time. Yeah. And, and the goals came because the quality is there, it's not disappeared. So eventually, you know, Anything that is happening there is going to score, and, and, and luckily he did, and it was one of the matches the other day. Um, so very happy for him. Yeah. Class is permanent. Yeah. Two more goals, and he'd win the Golden Boot again for there the second are. tournament in a row. Do uh, that and, and lift uh, the trophy as well. That's footballing immortality, uh, well, isn't it? Is, listen, these, these boys, they're already immortal in the eyes. Like I said, it did feel, we did feel more important than football uh, with the fans there. At, with, uh, big, big shout out to Wembley as well because there was definitely more than 60,000 in there. I don't know how they got in. <laughs> there was no yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. that stadium holds 90,000 and they're telling me there's only 60,000, no way. There was at least 75. <laughs> but um, that's probably the boys from Brent climbing over the wall, but good luck to them. <laughs> but um, no, immortality awaits all of these players. Mm. Again, and, and like I said, what, and the groundswell of emotion from everybody to... to at a, to, to back them and get behind them. It's just really brought the country together. But Harry Kane is, is right. He's a lead. Geica's right. He's a leader. And he is the, the, the poster boy and he's taking it all on his shoulders. And earlier on, he, he was he was fluffing his lines a bit. The yeah. pressure was getting to him. But what a man to just turn that round. And I expect him to score in the final. I expect him to step, to step up. He was outstanding um, against the Danes. Not just, not just his goal. Mm the way he, he, he led the line, won three kicks, got us up the pitch. You know, and he, he, I, I think he wins this tournament. I, I think he stands alone in English football, maybe next to Bobby Charlton, yeah. you know, from 90s. That, that's where I put Harry Kane at the moment. 
just like, yeah, I love him. If he ever needs someone to carry his golf bags around, he likes his golf, <laughs> I do it for him. I, I him. dreamt the night before that semi-final. I woke up in the morning and I said, I dreamt that Kane scored and we won it. Okay. And when he stepped Tell up... Tell us what you're my, doing tonight. <laughs> when he saved it, my heart was gone, but then he didn't let me down. I mean, he scored it first time in my dream, I have to say, so it wasn't that accurate. But Well, <laughs> if you'd have met Lindsay four weeks ago to start the tournament, she was like... So negative, but we've changed her around. She's she's like, go away for the, oh, yeah, yeah. Now she's fully, she's yeah, in my club now. We're, we're right. positive, we're ready, we're winning. I am, I'm feeding off yeah. it now. Absolutely, it's helped. And Gareth, we've seen as well, chop yeah. and change his team through, yeah. through the different challenges, the different games. What team do you think he should go for in that final? I think it would be the closer to what we saw the other day. I think, although we've seen a lot of changes, probably I didn't expect as many from, from him. Uh, but. Mm. I think it's important as, as much as you can as a manager to bring as many players as possible to, to bring minutes into them. Um, so they feel part of the actual yeah, process yeah. rather than just be on the bench and training. Uh, but I think uh, it could actually repeat what we saw on, on the semi-finals yeah. against the, uh, Denmark. Because once you get to that state where you really need your best team, it's the team they played. Uh, mm. Uh, it could have been for them instead of uh, Saka, but I think Saka was really good and he brings space on the side. So he gets the right balance on the on the outside yeah, and yeah. on the inside as well. Uh, of course, defence is not going to change and I don't think me feel neither. You don't think maybe you could go to the side who, who we beat no. Germany with? No, no. and no. I, I'll tell you... He's going to stick with the four. I think you'll stick with that. I think you'll stick with the same team. Um, and the reason I think that, he would have watched the Spanish game lose and so when Harry is going to play up front against Bonucci and Chiellini he's going to drop off like yeah, he does like he and then Saka the reason Saka got a nod over Foden is because he runs without the ball better yeah, yeah. He, he, he makes good runs you know so you'll have the balance of Saka and Sterling now I think the, that's where the game one of the reasons the, point one where I think where the game's going to be won point two I think the midfield it, they'll Gareth will be comfortable to match up three against three in there so Phillips and Rice and I think he'll go with Mount against Jorginho, mm. Verratti, and I don't know who played the third man for Ritty, maybe Barella. Um, Barella, yeah. Yeah, Barella. Who, whoever I, they... I tell you, maybe. But and yeah. I think the physical, the physicality of English midfield will be mm. too much. And I think Mason, it wasn't crucial now, because Jorginho, I think he's a fan, fabulous footballer, mm. but I think he, he leaves holes on the pitch defensively. Yeah, yeah. And he, he sometimes, someone like Mason who can dribble, I think the, the game's one where Mason runs off of Jorginho, like Morata's goal in the semi-final, yeah. and maybe picks a pass to Saka or Sterling, or maybe gets it. But I think Mason mounts the, the, the crucial man. If he can get on top of Jorginho, run off him, we win the game. Is there an argument to say you should bring in Jordan Henderson because it's a big boys game? <laughs> you, 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 there's an argument because Jordan was fantastic when he came mm. on the other night. The other time. Uh, there's an argument and Jordan's a fa fabulous player and he's a captain and he's a leader and he won't be phased because he's played Champions League finals. But I think Phillips and Rice have just got something mm. going. And, and when you've got combinations and partnerships mm. on the pitch, you, you tend to stick with that. You're watching All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral. Tuesday. This is why you love international football. Thursday, the best ever goalless draw. Saturday, these guys might be underdogs, but you wouldn't miss this match. Every match day matters. So every time you collect three match day stamps, you get a five pound free bet. Match day rewards from Coral. How key is that midfield area and how can England stop Italy getting control of it? Well, I think that's, that's a good point uh, that Joe is making in terms of you have to match up the, the physical side. Uh, they have probably a bit more quality in terms of when they have the yeah. ball. And I think that England lacked in some games where you knew the teams were going to sit back and you needed more, more quality. Maybe Henderson could have brought earlier in some games. But when, you, when he's trusted these guys, he's going to, of course going to trust them again. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and you want that to this guy, secure defence, balance and give the freedom to, to Saka mm -hmm. and, and, and Sterling and, and Mount of as well, which he works really hard, but also when yeah. he goes the ball, he really goes for it. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think it's, it's going to be there in that area, like, like because Kane always likes to drop. Yeah. Um, Bonucci, Kelini, similar situation with Spain. I think yeah. that's, that's, that's going to be key. They've been fantastic from the get-go, Italy, though, haven't they? They, they have, they have. But I saw tiredness. I saw fatigue. Mm -hmm. I was watching yeah, yeah. the game, and I thought I thought Mancini got it wrong because when 
it got to about 65 minutes and Spain were clearly the stronger side having more possession. And I looked at Chiellini and Bonucci, who I absolutely love, by the way. I have proper defenders. Like, they mm. are like Tony Adams, John Terry, just moulded into one. They're great defenders, but they were tired. Yeah. And there's nobody can tell me they weren't tired. extra day's rest. Is that Possible. significant? I, I thought Mancini should have gone... He got it right in the end because they won in the, in the shootout. But I think he, they needed help at that point. And I think if they get to 60, 70 minutes against England, when they've had Saka and Sterling running in behind them, having to concentrate, runners coming from everywhere, and then we bring on Sancho, Rashford, Grealish, Foden, I think yeah. there'll be too much for them. So they've been exceptional, but I think... I, I, I'm going to be brave and bold, and I just think they've run their. I think they've run their race, Italy. I, f I think we're we're in the ascendancy. We're saying the midfield could be key, but also, as, as Joel's saying, that the substitutions for yeah, Gareth and, yeah. and the timing of them mm. and who he brings on that could be key as well. Well, it is, and I agree because against Spain, at the end of the second half, they were like looking very tired, and mm. you saw when we start the extra time, they actually they were for me they were like okay, let's let's just yeah sit down, sit back, and yeah. just wait for the penalties. They, they they could not run at all. So when in England, when you look at the bench, it's like, okay, who do I bring on? It's, yeah. you, you're maintaining that level of energy and quality. And I don't think in, uh, Italy can't match up that way. How much have you enjoyed watching Benucci and Chiellini? Yeah, it's great. It's like old school defenders, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. You might say, okay, they haven't got pace, but they're clever enough to say, okay, we're not, we're not going up. We're staying here. Uh, and I love what, uh, one of the interviews he... I think it was Chiellini or Bonucci said like, well, I know the other one better than my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so they've played together for like so many it. years. It's like, they, they know each other so well that, okay, if you go, I come. Yeah. I call the guys to go, go, talk, yeah, talk yeah, together. Yeah. So yeah, fantastic. Not many center halves that we see nowadays. Yeah. That level of tough and, 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 and proper defenders, but, but also like good and clever on the ball. Do you know, uh, did you, what did you make of Chiellini and Jordi Alba? The little, um, the, the, yeah. well, did you see that, Linz? When they yeah, were shaking hands on the rest the of the penalty, penalty shootout, shootout. And he's, gra he's grabbing, grabbing Jordi and he's like, he looked like he's having the time of his life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some people in Spain, I don't think, didn't like that though. Really? Did they? They well, there was a bit of was... the, the draw, like kind of psychological. Because yeah. he's smaller thing. than him. Yeah. It was yeah. kind of, but I think it was more to do with like ah, yeah. having fun. And... Yeah. No, 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 maybe you're right. I, I was going to ask whether it was mind game. No, yeah, Spain, some people thought that. Like, maybe. They were like, okay. I got you here, we want to win you, sort of yeah. thing. But I oh, think it was more like... It's just him enjoying it. Yeah. He's 36 and he must be feeling yeah. this is his last tournament. Yeah, 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 He's trying to enjoy yeah. every moment. But I, I don't know, that, yeah. that well, could Italians, really you never get know. in your head, yeah, couldn't Italians it? Italians always hmm. have a sort of way to go, to get you. Yeah, yeah. I think it's to that point now. Um, my advice would be to Harry Kane is to just get him in a headlock there. Just <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Before he goes. Like, Come on, big man. <laughs> they asked Murata what it was like training with him and he said it was, it was like training with a gorilla and trying to steal the food out of <laughs> yeah. his cage. <laughs> there's no day off like, probably literally there's no days yeah. off with these guys a real a real good description of it and 33 games they are unbeaten what, what do you think that Mancini's done specifically to foster this winning mentality well I think he, he tried to bring what he was as a player like he was a winning talented mm. football player and I think some, somehow you when you've been a, a former player and you become a manager you, you try to replicate that sort of thing yeah. as a manager we see with Luis Enrique probably with, with Gareth as, as well um, and I think also closeness, like again, group. He, he brought this similar to Lucien Rick in terms of bringing players for, for not only Milan, Juve, yeah. uh, Inter Milan. So he, he really scouted the whole country in different yeah, clubs. Yeah. Sassuolo, like, I've never seen an yeah, Italian Sassuolo, squad with Atalanta, players. which has been successful in Champions League, yeah. but like two years ago, Atalanta, people yeah. didn't know where it was. So I think that he did very well that. And, and trust a group throughout, I think it's been three years now, he's been in, in, in charge. Yeah. And, and be part, make, make the national team. Because I think in, in our days, not the, the federation, the national team was like the, the place where you go once a month or once every yeah, two months. Yeah. Where now it's like really, they, they work to make you feel like a home, like a yeah, club. Yeah, yeah. So they really feel like part of it, of something. And I think that's been, that's been key. Of course, you've got the quality of the, of the players in Signe. Uh, in Mobile, Barella, yeah. I mean, so, so great players. Now you scare them the now, they, they <laughs> The way they attack as well, they're not that yeah. traditional Italian team, no, no. are they? 12 goals scored, still only three conceded, but going forward, they're much more of a threat. Different, like Mancini's, Mancini, the team plays in his image, and he's in, the, yeah. in his, it, but how his Man City team played, high press, yeah. play through the lines, so... Yeah, I mean, I, I'm like just so focused on England, and then you go, oh, Insigne, Immobile. 
Chiesa. Like they have got threats, they yeah. can hurt us. Yeah. We have to defend well. But they've been a joy. To, they've been a joy to watch. And Mancini, um, I actually played with Mancini in a in a, <laughs> a game in Dubai in January. Um, and he can still bloody play. I can mm. tell you that. And he looks all the Italian bench looks so yeah. fit, don't they? Look, look, <laughs> the best looking back the bench of manager, the best looking management staff. Sorry, Gareth and Steve Holland, <laughs> but um, the Italians, the geezer with the tash. I don't know who he is and the glasses. Yeah, but yeah, he, he's. Um, I'm a big fan. Viali as well always looks cool. Viali looks. <laughs> Viali's Viali's one of the nicest mm. people in football. Mm. Let me tell you, really, really good guy. Um, yeah, but yeah. Mancini, they play in his image for sure. What can England do then? What do they have to do that the other 33 teams couldn't? It's a good question, Linz. I don't think they need to... The, the, the beautiful thing about it, if we was playing France in their peak, the team that should have been France and it's Mbappe, then I think we'd have had to get everything right. And even if we were brilliant, they could have still beaten us because mm. Mbappe has to turn up Pogba and find a pass. But with this Italian side... I think we're evenly matched, and I think it will come down to the the, the the one, the two or three crucial areas on the pitch. I think, and it's a huge blow for Italy that Spinazzolo has been one of my surprise package. I've watched him play a couple of times when when I did when I when I did a bit of foreign football, and I knew he was a good player, but I didn't realise he was that mm. good. And he, so him being out on that left side gives us a chance as well. And so much has got to be about how you handle the occasion as well. What what did you do differently for the biggest games in your career? I think days go very slow as a player. Like you, you want the Sunday to mm. come quick, but mm. it doesn't. It's, yeah. And I think as a manager, as a player, try to think the less possible about the, the game. Yeah. Because otherwise you, you might get burnt by the time is, is there because you're talking all the time about the final, family, friends calling you. Uh, no, I think that as a manager, trying to keep away from the final as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, relax, have do fun trainings, uh, try to disconnect, try to bring everything a bit a bit lower. And then, yeah, from tomorrow, probably the, the first um, training session about about the game. And then, of course, Sunday, it'd be a long day for the mm. guys, like, yeah. to watch the game. But, yeah, I, I would, like, yeah, try, try to not to think too much about it because it's already a big enough game mm. that everyone is, is speaking about and you get tickets, your family is coming, not coming. Yeah. So try to keep your, your head off. So Sunday, your, your phone rings, you get the call and it's Gareth and he's like, Joe, can you just pop into the dressing room, just have a couple of minutes with the lads? What, what would you say to them? Oh, God. I've actually done that, Linz, right? We, I, noticed, I was working for ITV and I did a, a game against Montenegro and I, I bumped into Gareth and he said, Joe, because he, he's very big on getting the ex-players yeah. in to speak to like, great, great. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. So he said, um, Joe, would you... Uh, come and speak to the boys like just before the game just, just present Callum hudson Adoy's first cap who I knew so I went yeah not a problem I went yeah and I'm like and I'm sitting there an hour later I'm thinking I've got to speak to the England squad like an hour before I'd qualify and I'm like I've never done that before so I've gone in there and I absolutely just started over my words I was like Bruh. I went yeah well done Callum come and get your shirt <laughs> you know and it's like I've played with Raheem and Jordan and all that so I knew some there were some familiar faces but um it was brilliant because, you know, it was one experience. I stood there in front of this this England team and I'd give Callum his first shirt. But yeah, so if I was, I've done it, but if I was to go in there... You've got experience now. So I've got experience now. I'd go in there <laughs> and I would I would say, I'd try and take the pressure of him. I'd say, look, boys, you're 90 minutes, 120 minutes away from immortality, but you don't need to think like that. You're already heroes. Mm. There's already a generation behind you. you. We've buried the ghosts. Whatever happens today is, is, is going to happen. Go out there, play freely. You know what you're going to do tactically. And I'd just say, I'd let them know how proud I was of them as a group, everyone. Mm. And you get them out there and you send them on their way. And that's pretty, they'll probably be the easiest team talk mm. of Gareth Southgate's yeah. career. Because you don't, there's, there's nothing to, everyone's tuned in to every word you say. You ain't got to grab someone's attention. So I just think, I just think that's it. Just minimise the occasion. Keep it calm. Mm. Keep calm. Go out there and play with fire in your belly. You've already, you've already won it in the eyes because you've brought the country together and go and play. Do you think mm. it would be seen as a failure if we don't win it? Or do you think we have already won? I, it's a free hit in it, a way. Sorry, so, I, I, I personally think... Right, these boys, 
they've, they've already won. They've won. We've been, like we said before in the last, I said it felt more more than football mm. at stadium. You know, it felt like, because of everything everyone's been through, and Gareth has led these boys, given the country back that joy. So they've already won for me. They've already won, 100%. But go and finish the job. Yeah, I agree in the sense of they've already achieved a huge thing. Uh, and, and I'm sure the impact in, in, in the country and football in England is already there and it's going to stay. Uh, of course, winning for a lot of people will make the difference between being successful or not. Mm. So it's, it's, it's one of those, like, you have to win it to, mm. for some people, really appreciate what you've done, unfortunately. Yeah. But the success and, and, and the impact in society in, in this country is already there. Yeah. What was what was Spain like after 2008 when you we beat Germany? In, was it Germany in the final? Germany, yeah. Yeah, you brought the country together. Did it? You know, Spain is very different to England in terms of we've got the Basque, Basque we've got Catalans, yeah. Madrid, yeah. the South. So yeah. everything is very different. Everyone is like, it seems sometimes like before from my city or my yeah. region rather in Spain. And that changed completely when, when, when we won yeah. the 2008. Everyone, you could see Spanish flags everywhere. Yeah. It can before. actually change a country. It does, yeah. yeah. And footballistically the same. It was like, from that moment on, everyone wanted mm. to play like Spain, yeah. even in Spain. Change world football. Change, change, change world football. Really, yeah, yeah. The, the, the Spanish, like, I nearly signed for, for Valencia in 2003. I don't know if you were still there or you'd left by then, but I've always been an admirer. You yeah. know how much the English love. I watched Revista yeah. de la Liga every, every time it was on. I loved it and I nearly signed. And the Spanish have led the way culturally changing football. Yeah. And that team that come and they won them tournaments, that's where... That that's where they're at, and I feel like we're at the precipice now. I think teams now, if we win this tournament, teams will look at the England squad yeah. in that with eyes like that. I think, what what have they done? What are they doing? And so much about is about progression. Do you think? And we've seen that now mm. from the from the World Cup to here. We've got mm -hmm. through that semi final in the final, so that yeah. takes a bit of the pressure off. You're you're seeing clear progress. And and, and also, not just that. Who have we got behind? Foden's not played much. Bellingham, by the way, is probably mm. one of the best young players yeah. in the world. Greenwood's not Pedro. even in the squad. He's going to be a star. Yeah. And I promise you... Trent's injured. Trent, I promise you, underneath that as well, there's play. There's a conveyor belt. That's why I'm, I'm confident in telling these lads on, on Sunday they've already won. They've, they've blazed the trail for the next generation of... And we, you know, but we want to win it. And I think... I think that's why I asked the question to Geico about the Spanish because I think it, it will bring us together because we're very similar. We're very tribal in yeah. England as well. You know, you've got the the Geordies, the Scousers, the, the Londoners, blah, 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 and we've all got our teams and our league's so strong. Yeah. But to do it, put it all together internationally, it will be great. Although since I've been living in the South, I've realised quite a lot of people have got two teams, which is really? a bit weird for me. <laughs> that, yeah, definitely. Really? Like, like a Man United and then a Brighton. Yeah, but you live in the posh parts, <laughs> Linz. You live in the posh parts. It's, it's very strange, yeah. this, this two-team thing. What do you think of, of Gareth Southgate then, guys, and the job he's done in managing these No, players? he's done great. I think he's... He, from the beginning, when I saw him taking under 17s and under 21s, yeah. he looked like the right job for him in terms of the federation. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. At that sort of level, rather than the club. Yeah. Uh, and of course, he's improved a lot since, since he was at Middlesbrough as a manager. Uh, you had him in your, your final yeah, was, year. Yeah, what was he like club. then? He was learning. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the first time. He had good stuff around him, but he, again, he's a learning coach. He, he, in the beginning, because he's been teammates, he kind of struggled to put the line yeah, between yeah, being yeah. friends and teammates. Now you're a coach, and when you go to someone and say, okay, you, you, you understand, they're like, oh, well. I thought we, we were mates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God. And it comes to talk to you. So he, I think it was tough for him in that in that respect. But of course, now he's, yeah. he's learned his way through. And, and I think he's very good in that sense. He's very human human being rather than a coach. And because he's yeah. such a young team, I think he's kind of father figure yeah. to a lot of these guys that he's taking with respect. He had them, some of them in the, in the, in the 70s and 21. Yeah. And I think that's also helped him and helped the players because they know each other very well. Yeah, he's just he's inspired he's inspired me, Linz, to get into yeah. the coach. And I thought I was miles off it, but the more I watch what he's done, and because we know Gareth and we we know him as a person, you know, it's it's, it's inspiring that his journey yeah. to go from where he, he come from because he, he didn't have it all his own way at Middlesbrough. He yeah. got sacked after two years, went away, learned, went into the FA, took the age groups, got pushed through. You know, it's quite inspiring, really. But you're right, 
he's a he's a great person before a coach. I think it's more now. These boys respond to that. Yeah. He, he, he talks to them like men, and he. It doesn't really work nowadays to to just shout and scream at people. You well, you need he, to give more than that. You, you do, you do. Well, you, you can't do that now. You know, these 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 boys are brought up in a different. It's a, it's a better world, in my opinion. Like we're talking about the, the young tennis player off air yesterday, and you know, Emma Raducanu. Emma, what a talent she is, and and. And she, you know, obviously she had the incident and it, it was a bit much for her. And she, and we're right, the country now right behind her. We're going to support her to become a better tennis player. And she one day lift Wimbledon. 20 years ago, she would have been, it might have been a different um, conversation. So I think we're, it's a better world at the moment. We're better people. And these, these, these lads who are playing for England are, are much more mature than we was at that age. I'm, I'm convinced of that. And, and, and Gareth recognises that and he, he manages them accordingly. He seems the perfect man for the job from, yeah. from an FA point of view. He's very much the FA's man, mm. but he's become everybody's man. Yeah. There's not a single person who you speak to who, who doesn't love no. Gareth Southgate yeah, now. For sure. You're right. He got labelled with that, Linz, and it, being the FA man. And in this country, it means... It's a bit derogatory if you can say that because it means you're you're a company man. You're not. You're just going to do what you're told. Yeah. So people sort of labelled him with that Gareth, but you, Gareth's tough. Mm. Gareth's a tough, tough man, and he won't do nothing he don't want to do. You know. So, and he's shown that he, the decisions he's made were so against the grain. Yeah. It would have been easy. To, the, the, the 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 less brave decision would have been to go with oh, play Jack, play yeah. Grealish, play Foden. So everyone was just. And if we lose, well, there's not as much criticism. You might get the next tournament, but he's going, park that, this is my team, this yeah. is what I want to do. And that takes a strong character to do. Well, your Coral odds, if you think Chiellini and Maguire will both be showing a card on Sunday, Coral will give you odds of 18-1. to 1. You can back England to win 2-0 and Mason Mount to be the first goal scorer at 70-1. to 1. And if you think England will win the trophy... And Sterling will finish top goal scorer. Coral will give you odds of 14 to 1. It's time now, though, for what really happened. And this is where we pick a moment from your career that we okay. want to find out a little bit more about. So yeah. we're going to take you back to 2002 and possibly one of the most iconic adverts of all time. The yeah. Nike right. Scorpion advert, the best players in the world, playing in a kind of dystopian cage football yeah. tournament. You, you were in there, in that cage with... The likes of Ronaldo, Ronaldinho, Figo, Carlos, yeah. Henri, Totti, loads, loads more. Just tell us a bit more about what it was like to it's film that. It's a bit funny because the the advert was uh, filmed in a like a big warehouse next to my house, where I lived in Rome at the time. Okay. So when they told me that's what we're doing the the the, the advert, it was like, okay. So it didn't feel so spectacular as yeah. as you would have thought. Of course, when you walk in into the warehouse, it was like this ship. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, replica, uh, unbelievable, unbelievably done. So we we film in different days. So not all the players were there all the time, but a lot of them, a lot of us, as were on the day. And it, it was so much fun. Like the games, they would ask you to do tricks and things like that for the for the filming, but you didn't have to really ask much because yeah. once you put the ball on there, four of the guys, Roberto Carlos, Figo, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rio Ferdinand was there as well, Totti. Hold so on. Rio was there. Rio was there. <laughs> yeah. With a skill, really. Yeah. Oh, he's gonna. It, yeah. I'm gonna have to put that He will. He will. Um, he will love that. Scores. Scores. He was there as Skulls, well. I think was there as well. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. yeah. Well, Scolzi and Scolzi and Rude, but Rio's a centre half. Yeah, Rio was there. Yeah. That. <laughs> well, we had. Um, I think it was kind of bar as well. So there okay. was a bit of. Who was on yeah. your? Because you were in teams of three. For yeah, the we were. Um, equipo del Fuego, so the team of fire. Uh, mm. Like the, I think because the, the Latin sort of side, which mm. coincided with three play for Lazio at the time. So it was Crespo, Piojo Lopez, and myself. I love Crespo. Yeah. Played with him at Chelsea. We reached semi final. I think we reached quarter final, semi final. Yeah, something like that. But it was, I mean, incredible. Like even when the other guys were playing, you were in the cage, like watching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You must have like, been buzzing when you got. The yeah, yeah, it was like yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah. That was actually, I think, the second album. We did one before, like it was the freestyler. Yeah. Uh, so Nike at those days were quite advanced in terms of yeah. of doing these things, uh, but it wasn't, of course, as a spectacular. This this stands out as one of the best adverts. Oh, just getting get, yeah, that was great. I remember that now. It was Terry Gilliam, the Terry Gilliam, the director, from Monty Python. Monty Python, yeah, really, it was really cool. Uh, yeah, 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 like really. 
wasn't like a film, so it, it, there was no script or anything. So it was very easy for us just to turn up. It was only Cantona in the beginning, like he was standing on the top of the cage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would say like, throw the ball and he'd say like, I don't know, star lads or something, yeah, very yeah. easy. Yeah. So not really anything to say, it was basically pure football. What was Cantona like as the referee there? He, he wasn't much there because he was literally the referee. So he yeah. came a couple of days, that was it. But again, the bus around it was like fun. Like yeah, all the guys, yeah. really good. Can Cantona, we did soccer aid with Cantona, and I had I, got, I had a picture of him growing up when I went up to make, like me when I'm about twelve with him. I think should I go and take him to sign it? But he's got this aura when he like when he walks into a room, it's like yeah. the Godfather's here. It's a bit <laughs> like, I'm like I didn't. I was, I was nervous going up to speak to him. I've seen him in, in yeah. a dressing gown. Yeah, <laughs> he was walking out of a spa in a hotel in Seville. He walked past me in a, in a robe, and I thought. That's Cantona. <laughs> did he hold on? Did he have the collars up on the road? Yeah. He did. Oh, he did. Oh, that's of course quality. he did. He did. That's <laughs> quality. Were, were there any egos on on the set or no. any prima donnas fighting yeah. over dressing rooms? No, I mean it was. You could tell there was a bit of competitiveness in the actual tournament, mm. although everything was a bit set up. Like okay, mm. we need these teams to reach the final. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, no, it was very very nice atmosphere. Yeah. Like everyone very having a laugh and enjoying. Yeah. And then after the filming, we would go for dinner or whatever. It was great, yeah. No, there was no no big egos. I just remember I think, the Carlos Scorpion kick from it, but was that pre-planned or did you just do that off the cuff? No, I think it was planned, but because he he used to do it in, like in trainings. Yeah. Uh, but I guess, like I said, planned there was not much. Like maybe sometimes okay, do that skill, but do it here because the camera yeah. is there, or do something there instead of here. Uh, but but it was. Just let the guys play. Just yeah. do whatever you feel. And you doing. scored a cracking goal as well. We scored, yeah, I'd like you to score a goal. It, all, it will happen a lot on the games, but not everything will be used. Mm. So you might have scored or do something great and they thought it wasn't like, oh, shit. <laughs> you must have done it. My, my, best, my best skill and it wasn't on the advert. <laughs> yeah, guy, guy, we played in the Star Sixes, yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah. We, in Scotland, just... Um, I just retired, so I was still fit. And yeah. it was England. We played the rest of the world in the final. It was a good game. Um, they had a great team. You had Stan Petrov, yeah. like um, JJ Okocha. JJ Okocha, yeah. Yeah, good team. Pires. Pires. Yeah, and we had, uh, like, it was me, Paul Koncheski, Wayne Bridge, Michael Owen played. Michael, team, yeah. But it was in Scotland, so yeah. in, like, we're playing the rest of the world. Yeah. And the jocks were, like, booing <laughs> us. They're cheering them on. And um, we ended up winning the final 3-2, but it was a great, it was a great uh, few days. We we won the tournament and we won the, the drinking competitions in the bar afterwards. The English, we really, we, we, it was a, it was a fantastic yeah. few days. I think of these days when you put like players together or former yeah, players together, yeah. it's just the the laugh is just having. It was like it was fun. It was like, a lot of fun. It was of course, like, you were competitive. You don't like yeah. to to lose still. But it was um, it was good fun. We had a great like like a stag do with football <laughs> with, 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 with uh, crowd. It was brilliant. You yeah. must have done a few adverts. Do you know what? I've done a lot of the, the Nike adverts now, yeah. but... You must have I, done like a cheesy deodorant uh, one or something. I'll tell you what I did. The, I did one... The shaving. I did one for, <laughs> yeah. I did one for Samson, right, when I was at Chelsea. And uh, I thought I was a brilliant actor, right? <laughs> that's, well, that's the problem with football players. We think I'm good at everything with yeah. that. Do you, do you remember the, the one we did for the Pub Cup lately? Oh, you only had one line, Joel. Yeah, I messed it took up. took you about 20 goals. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> The director's no, there. You at the time. I was like, no, yeah, no. The, di the director's like, just, just one line. Like, what are you doing? I just couldn't get it I'm out. I'm trying to think what you had to say. I can't believe. I couldn't remember I on the day. I think you said like, remember. what a player, Linz. Yeah, oh, what Pure a player. Pure class. Is. Yeah, not even like a proper <laughs> sentence, is it? I still can do it. But I did the one for Samsung, and I got right into it. I ain't gonna lie. I was like phew, trying to like phew, get into the mode yeah. like Tom Cruise. <laughs> And I was thinking, I've, I've nailed it. The director's going, you've nailed it, you've nailed it. And then when I looked at myself doing it, it was crap. It was rubbish. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a good actor. Let's get some predictions then, <laughs> right. shall we? Um, for the final, 8 o'clock on Sunday at Wembley. Every match matters with Coral, but of course, this is the one mm. that matters the most. Who's going to lift the trophy and, and what do you think the score's going to be? I'll go for, a, although very tight, again, I think it's going to be a slow star. Yeah. Like checking each other for, for quite some time, not making mistakes, but I go for 2-1 uh, for England. Yes. Yeah, I think, again, the, the depth in the squad, Wembley, uh, Italy's kind of, I think, picked too early in the tournament, mm -hmm. so now it's kind of feeling, feeling that yeah. a, bit, a little bit. And, and yeah, like the bench, when you look at, at England squad, yeah. uh, you look at the bench, who do I bring? They, 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 I yeah. don't think Italy can't match that, that up. What about the goal scorers? 
I go for for Keane and and, uh, and Sterling. I think both deserve to to score in the final for what have they done uh, yeah. so far. And I hope um, Kane gets, gets the 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 golden boot. If he, I think it'd be great again because when you've been there and you see all the criticism that you get, how he's dealt with it, yeah. how he's overcome it, how he's bounced back, he deserves now the, the the praise and the credit. I hope so. Just I two more so. for that for that golden boot. What <laughs> do you more. think, Joel? Um, and isn't it one more? And then if you get assists, one more to be level, get, I think. Oh yeah, and then if he gets an assist, yeah, assist. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's why Ronaldo's on top now. He's but just of Shing, two of things that haven't got assists. Okay. Get it comfortably. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, that's possible. I think Linz. I think England managed the first thirty minutes of the game because I think that's when the Italians will be at their their most dangerous. Like when we're trying to play out. I think they've got a fantastic press. They've had the, the energy. Managed the first 30 minutes of the game. The second phase of the game, between 30 and 60, I think will be cagey. I think after 60 minutes, I think we'll start to get on top of them. I think England's subs will come on, start to impact the game. I think it may be 1-1 or 0-0 and go into extra time. And I think we'll win it in extra time, like we did against Denmark. Very, very similar game, I think. The only thing I'm concerned about is if it goes to penalties, because I've said how much I admire Donnarumma, I think that's the only thing I'm worried about, but I'm going to think it's going to be... I'm going to go 2-1 in extra time, and I'm going to go Mason Mount to score, running off of Jorginho in the midfield. I've just, and, and I just I can picture that happening. Harry Kane, Mason Mount score. We can't afford to let them get in front because it's the worst team in the world, isn't oh. it, to go 1-0 down against? I mean, Italian for us, much as they've changed the style of mm. playing, especially on attack, mm. the Italians. Yeah. They have the DNA, defensive, yeah. competitive, that will yeah. they will knock you down, yeah. fall here, stop there, yeah. put the ball away. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want they, they, to start they, winning. They sacrifice, the, the attacking players sacrifice themselves for the team very well in yeah. the Italians. That's why they've been so successful. Yeah over the years, winning games in different ways. And you're going to be at Wembley. You're going to be I the am. second best dressed man there after Mancini. Oh, do you know what? I, I'm going to go <laughs> for the first best. I might wear a three-piece suit for this one. <laughs> Grow the moustache. Like, well, I don't even know the fella's name, um, the assistant. Do you know him? The assistant no, with a, is he an ex-player? I with the glasses so, and the... Yeah. And, like, I can't take my I eyes off him. Is. I just look at him and just think, you are a cool man. <laughs> Looking forward to I it, though. I can't wait. I can't wait. So excited. Well, your Coral odds for Sterling to score at any time and get an assist. Coral will give you odds of 28 to 1. You can back Italy to win, Immobile to have two or more shots on target and Insigne to have an assist at 14 to 1. And if you think Kane is going to do with Jeff Hurst and score a cup final hat-trick at Wembley Stadium, Coral will give you odds of 66 to 1. Come on, Harry. I'll 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 tell you what his odds on. Me shedding a tear at Wembley. I was a ner- I was an emotional wreck before the semi-finals. No. I was like, just getting so involved with it emotionally. So I guarantee you, if we win it, I'll be I'll be in, I'll be shedding a little tear. Thank you so much for, for coming on. It's Enjoy great. the final. Where will you be watching it? Yeah, with the stadium as well. Yeah, not as really? elegant as this guy with the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Good, good to see you. And Joel, this is our last pod of the Euros as well. What, what have been the highlights for you? Um, the, the highlight, without a shadow of a doubt, is you telling Ali McCoy Scotland were the same as Panama. <laughs> that I said not as bad as not Panama. As, not, just, just by a little bit. That's been the highlight for me. <laughs> and we can never get Ali back on after that. I'm, not, I'm, I'm sure he will. And you can find us on the Joe YouTube channel or wherever you find your podcast. And Joe, for the final time, is it coming home or is it going to Rome? It's coming home. Come on. It's coming home. Nobody go and try and get a pizza Monday night because the Italians <laughs> are going to be so angry with being 3 nil. It's got to be coming home, it's hasn't coming it? Home. It's, it's coming, coming home. home. Right. Thank you very much, to everyone, for listening. You've been listening to the All To Play For podcast brought to you by Joe and Coral. You've been watching All To Play For, brought to you by Joe and Coral.